All right, before we uh, take a look at these transistors, I wanted to um, show the radio working. Um, so once it warms up, um, it turns into a very nice receiver. So here's some, here's some uh, audio of it receiving. All right, so I really like it. It has a very, very nice quality, very clean front end. So it is, it is a good receiver. We just need to get it more reliable so we can turn it on. It turns on, so having to wait 15 minutes for it to warm up. So let's take a look at some uh, transistors here uh, that might be the fault of it not warming up. All right, so I'm going to see if I can replace it with these transistors, which are BC. There's a series. It's BC 546 to BC 549. The BC 547 seems to be kind of like the most popular one out there in the wild. Um, so uh, here is the difference between those. Uh, the 46 is higher voltage, the 48 being lower voltage. And uh, it seems like the 48s aren't, just aren't popular. I think for the same price you get a 47, so why not? All right, so um, the thing that we want to talk about is, is, let's see here, here it goes. So you can buy these parts in three different grades, A, B, or C. If you get a, uh, let's pick this one here. Here's, here's uh, two milliamps of collector current if you buy an A part, then you're guaranteed a gain somewhere between 110 and 220. Group B is 200 to 450, and group C is 420 to 800, okay? So I went ahead and bought a group B and a group C. Um, so from DigiKey, this is the uh, 547C, and this one is the 547B. And you can see here printed on the uh, package, also, you can see the B version and the C version, okay? So let's take a look at them on the um, curve tracer. All right, so uh, this is a trace of the B version, okay? And we have uh, 200, uh, a beta of 200 per division, all right? So let's see if I can turn up the, uh, Turn up the grid here. Which one is it? Is it this one? Yeah, there we go. I can get a little bit more grid. Maybe you can see it. Anyway, it looks like it's about, uh, let's see, two, three, maybe up to 350, something like that, um, of beta. If I look at the C version, you can see that it gets bigger, right? C ver uh, B version, C version, B version, C version. So the C version has more gain. So if we go here, we have about one, two and a half divisions at 400, at uh, 200, so that's 50, uh, uh, 500. So we have a beta of 500 here, we have a beta of 350 on the other one, and yeah, you can see that they're the same part, just different, different gains. We can also test that on a little, uh, a little test box, so let's do that. All right, let's turn this thing on here. And we'll take out the uh, B part. Let's put in the B part. And we'll test that. And the beta turns out to be 346. What we were saying about 350, so 346. Uh, very nice. And let's get the uh, C version out. Here's the C version. And, uh-oh, why are we shutting down? We don't have uh, enough battery. Maybe I need to put in more battery. Anyway, 325, I can just see it in there. It's 325. Um, let's do, yeah, shut down. Wait a minute. Why is it shutting down? It looks like it has battery. Shut down, I don't want to shut down. Well, that's really weird. Why is it shutting down? Hmm. Okay, let me, um, where's my charging cord? 
All right, I plugged in a USB charging port. Oh, I, I guess it is dead battery. All right, it's been sitting around. Uh, let's put this back in. Yeah, there we go, Th 530. So, yeah, so our curve tracer and our little box match each other. That's always a good thing. And so we have these transistors. So now the next thing to do is um, remove one of those transistors from the board, the uh, 2SC460s, and uh, see what it looks like on the curve tracer, and then compare it to one of these and see if we can kind of get an apples to apples to figure out which one we want to use. All right, uh, I think I was an idiot. Uh, remember I showed you this block diagram here and all of the frequencies are diode switched in. They, the frequencies come out the diodes and on my schematic, I don't know if you can see it, but on the schematic, there's diodes on the top, which sort of confused me, but there's the diodes on the bottom. So the frequency comes out the bottom and then it makes its way over to this driver and filter to clean it up and then it comes out as the VCO. And um, I was probing test point one, which is kind of a DC voltage into these switchers. I don't know what TP1 does. I need to read the, read, the, read the manual. So TP1 is not the right place to take a look at. So let's take a look at the bottom of all of these uh, diodes here. We should be able to see something there. And yeah, it looks a lot better. So uh, one frequency, dunk, dunk, dunk. Those are all 10 meters. Here's 21, 14, 7, 3. So, um, and then if you look at the output of the VCO, which is after it goes through the buffer and the filter, then it looks even nicer. We'll go through those again. Uh, nice, nice, nice. 21, oops, 21, 14, 7, and 3. So, yeah, everything looks great when it runs. So, now I'm a little bit worried about shotgunning anything, so I'm going to take my time. Don't jump in and fix something if it ain't broke. Um, so I need to figure out why it doesn't always start up easily. Um, and it still may be some transistors. That sounds likely, but maybe I'm poking around at the wrong one right now. And it's something else. So... Yeah, back to the drawing board.